Well, hello there, church family. Uh, as we continue to try and reach out and to have things be a little bit more closer to what we would consider normal, uh, we are going to start uh, putting on the uh, internet our studies from the adult Sunday school class. And so you're welcome to share this with whoever you'd like. Um, and we're going to continue on with the study and the attributes of God as we take a look at the holiness of God today uh, and go a little bit deeper into that study. But before we begin, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that is watching this video. Uh, Lord, I ask that the uh, truths that are communicated uh, from your word about your holiness would be taken to heart uh, and that it would truly transform us and, and help us to see how important it is for us to embrace you as the one who is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And we do pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just by way of a preface before we uh, jump into the next section on the holiness of God, as you know, uh, we took a look at uh, quite a few different uh, Bible uh, texts uh, last time, uh, which was uh, quite a few weeks ago. Um, but we did uh, realize the biblical emphasis on the holiness of God. Uh, and I'd like to begin by just reading a quote that uh, I think R.C. Sproul really uh, hits the nail on the head as um, he uh, mentioned in his book, The Holiness of God. He says, The Bible says that God is holy, holy, holy. Not that he is merely holy or even holy, holy. He is holy, holy, holy. The Bible never says that God is love, 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 or mercy, 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 or wrath, 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 or justice, justice, justice. It does say that he is holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so as we consider the attribute of the holiness of God, um, we are looking at an attribute that God wants us to understand and to know uh, is very much uh, in an important attribute. Matter of fact, it helps define all the rest of the attributes uh, because we take a look at God's love and we say it is a holy love. When we take a look at God's mercy, we say it's a holy mercy. Uh, and as you think about all the different attributes of God, they are all defined by this one aspect, this one truth, is that they are holy. And not only holy, but as uh, the Word of God makes very clear that He is holy, holy, holy. Uh, and we took a look last time at Isaiah um, as he had an encounter with the Holy One, uh, you know, just after the death of King Uzziah, uh, that that brought forth a transition uh, where the prophet needed to remind the people, because they were wandering away from him, that he is holy, holy, holy. And Isaiah's uh, assessment after his encounter was, as we read in, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, that woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And so today I'd like to transition and take a look at one other biblical character uh, that had an encounter with God in his holiness, uh, and that is the character of Moses. As you know, and you read your Old Testament, you know that Moses uh, was the one who uh, God chose to lead uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt and through the wilderness. Uh, that uh, Moses was uh, specially picked to uh, receive the law of God. Uh, that Moses is one of the ones that is mentioned in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 in that great faith chapter uh, as having faith in God. Uh, and two, uh, as we take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 34, um, after Moses actually died, uh, we know that uh, according to chapter 34, verse 5, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he, and this is God, God buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. And it goes on to conclude the book of Deuteronomy with the last three verses. And listen to what it says about Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all of Israel. And so you can see that there's a very special relationship here uh, that God had with Moses. As we consider the holiness of God, 
we need to see exactly uh, how God treats uh, one instance in the book of Numbers that we read about. Uh, and that's where our text is going to be from uh, for this uh, short part on the holiness of God. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to Numbers chapter 20, uh, because Moses finds himself in a situation, uh, both he and Aaron. Uh, and how Moses handles this situation is going to teach us something about the holiness of God and something that we need to take to heart as well, re realizing just how special the relationship was that Moses had with God, that God takes his holiness very seriously. So Numbers chapter 20, starting in verse 2, says, Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, uh, would that we perish when our brothers perish before the Lord? Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to, to this evil place? It is no place for grains or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Verse 6 says, Then Moses and Aaron went to the uh, from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. So let's stop there for a moment. So a couple things we need to notice is uh, first in verse 3 there, you'll notice that the people are quarreling. Uh, they're grumbling and complaining. Uh, they thought that their, their plate in Egypt was better than where they find themselves now. Uh, not taking into consideration everything that the Lord has done to bless them and where the Lord has promised to take them. Uh, instead, they quarrel with Moses and Aaron uh, and basically are, are saying, uh, wh why have you brought us here uh, for the purpose of dying out into this, uh, this land that has nothing? Uh, and so as a result of this, uh, you, you will uh, notice that uh, M Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the Lord because basically they had to regroup themselves. They've been you know, in the in midst of a, a bunch of grumbling and complaining and to get perspective and to, to seek God's counsel on what to do next. Uh, they come into the, the tent of meeting and they fell on their faces and the Lord appeared to them there. And as part of what it says in verse 6 there, that his glory uh, appeared. So that they, were, they found themselves uh, in the presence of the Lord. And God gives them the instructions as to what to do in verses 7 and 8, which we read, uh, that he should... Uh, uh, take and uh, before the congregation to tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. Uh, and so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the, the action that Moses takes um, after this, because we, we now know what the situation is. Notice in verse 10 of Numbers chapter 20, it says, Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before uh, the, the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and notice this, struck the rock with his staff twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah where the, the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and through them he showed himself holy. So here as we think and consider the holiness of God, you know, and you look at Moses' situation, Moses had every right to be angry because these people were, were quarreling uh, and they were going against what God um, was doing in showing them something about himself as he showed them as the Lord who provides um, as the Lord who directs uh, and leads them to the place that they should go. Uh, and the problem is, is that uh, Moses' anger took a turn. Instead of it being just a righteous anger against the Lord and still being obedient to him and speaking to the rock, 
he in, instead decided to strike the rock twice. And so in striking the rock, that was an act of disobedience on Moses' part, as we read in verse 11. And, you know, as I thought about this and as I took a look in this study, you know, I've always looked at, at Moses' anger as the actual sin before God. But did you catch, as I read the text, exactly what the real sin was? Uh, because the real sin was an irreverence for the holiness of God. Notice again in verse 12, And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me, so in other words, because you didn't trust me to do what I said, and you didn't obey me in what I commanded you to do, and, and, and before the assembly to uphold me as holy in their eyes, uh, before the people of Israel, that the penalty was going to be that, th that they would not be able to go into the very land that God had promised. Because they had quarreled with the Lord, and the Lord showed himself as holy, and in order to maintain his holiness, he could not let this infraction go unpunished. And so therefore, as a result of Moses' disobedience uh, in this, uh, he found himself not being able to go into the promised land. Instead, his fear of God should have overcome his anger. And, and I can understand and relate to this because I have found myself angry many times in my life. And I can honestly say that most of it has not been in any way righteous or for uh, you know, God's cause and his holiness, but instead for my own personal satisfaction. And as we take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, uh, God keeps his promise. And as, we, as they're getting ready and right before the death of Moses, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, it says in verses 51 and 52, Because you broke faith with me in the midst of the people of Israel at the waters of Mirabah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, and because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the people of Israel, for you shall see the land before you, so he'll have a chance to see what God promised, but you shall not go there into the land that I'm giving to the people of Israel. So the lesson from this, and as you take a look at this and you read this and see it from God's perspective, as opposed to um, Moses' perspective and being righteously angry with a bunch of people that are grumbling and complaining, we need to understand that God takes his holiness very seriously. Uh, and that there are consequences when we do not um, portray God as holy, uh, not only in our own lives personally, but even as a body of believers, so that we, we guard God's holiness because he is not just holy, he is holy, holy, holy. So I trust that this little section will cause you to think and will be a blessing to you. Uh, and uh, I look forward to our next time as we take a little bit more deeper look uh, into holiness as we define it uh, and take a look at how it's uh, utilized in the scriptures. Uh, so let's close in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this time. I thank you for each and every one that has uh, listened to this video uh, and this teaching, Lord. May they understand just how important it is for us to embrace the fact that you are holy, holy, holy. And that as we live our lives, as we make our choices, as we decide what we're going to do, may we always look through that lens. Does this truly and, and, and fully uh, take into consideration the holiness of God? Or is this just what I want to do? Uh, and may that be a filter that we use in, in everything, whether it's through our, the actions that we take, uh, through the words that we speak, uh, even in our thought life. Uh, and Lord, may we truly glorify you uh, as the one who is holy, holy, holy. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll take a, and keep a lookout for the next uh, teaching in the holiness of God.